Good evening, folks. This is Deb Delapiana, and this is your Chain Reaction Report. You know, tonight, before I start to work on the website, we're going to just spend just a little time talking about the looming indictment from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office uh, of Donald Trump. You know, on Twitter, it's being called Stormy Watch, okay? And speaking of chain reaction reports, uh, this whole indictment scenario has created a series of chain reactions that we're going to talk about. So first of all, let's get a couple of things straight. Number one, Donald Trump is one of the biggest pathological liars uh, in American history. Uh, a week ago, this very day, Saturday, he took to social media and announced that he was going to be arrested and charged on Tuesday, which would have been this past Tuesday. That was never the case. Just so you understand, that was a outright lie. And it was done for a reason. But before we get into that, I'd like to remind everybody that this is a man who lied about COVID-19, who lied about Hillary Clinton, who has lied about just about everything. Um, in fact, he told 30,573 documented lies in just four years of, president, of the presidency. These are all documented. You can find them all in the Washington Post. You can find them all in the New York Times. I'll put them in the video so you can access them. Um, you know, it doesn't take much to vet a liar. It really doesn't. So there was never any indication from the Manhattan DA's uh, office that this was an imminent um, an imminent uh, indictment. The grand jury, in fact, is still hearing evidence, and it will reconvene, as far as we know, on Monday, and it will hear from yet another. Uh, and this could be the final person it hears from, but it is still an ongoing uh, investigation. So this in and of itself has set off a chain reaction. So we see on Facebook uh, posts such as, uh, I'm really pissed off. I'm paraphrasing here, just so you know, but this is just the gist of it. I'm really pissed off that they they didn't indict tr Trump this week because now he's going to get to talk uh, at Waco and encourage violence. Well, look at I need you to understand something here. I'm not asking people to be legal eagles because you know what? I'm not a legal person. I'm not paralegal. But logic will tell you that criminal investigations aren't based on campaigns. They can't rush an indictment because some guy's holding a fucking rally in Waco at the scene of, by the way, one of the biggest anti-government standoffs in American history. And he did that for a reason. That's called riling up your base. Just so everyone understands what Donald Trump is really all about here. So let's also talk about why he lied about the indictment. Because he knew that would create a chain reaction. And it certainly did. First of all, it gave him the opportunity, the consummate grifter, to raise money off that indictment. He sent out a letter that very day asking for money. This is how the GOP does shit. They raise money off scenarios that they themselves create. That's Donald Trump's hallmark, okay? That's the first thing he did. The second thing he did was cause his little minions to rally the troops behind him. We had Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, lowering himself to the point where he was calling Alvin Bragg a radical DA. Alvin Bragg is not a radical anything. He's a district attorney in Manhattan following the letter of the law, okay? He's not a radical because he's considering indicting Donald Trump. This is a man, Kevin McCarthy should keep his nose out of this. The Congress of the United States has no business interfering in a state investigation. Jim Jordan, who, by the way, let's state this flat out, right out in front, 
received a letter from Donald Trump's attorney encouraging him to hold hearings on the Manhattan DA's office. So what does Jim Jordan do, being the buffoon that he is? He sends a letter to Alvin Bragg demanding the files and demanding that he come and testify. The government has no authority whatsoever to stick its nose into a state criminal investigation of anybody, Donald Trump or no or anyone else. This is clearly intimidation and it's clearly obstruction of justice. That's what's going on here. The other people who signed the Jim Jordan letter were James Comer, who I'd like to remind everyone was just discovered that in 2015, while he was running for governor, he uh, illegally obtained emails from somebody's server so that he could use them against this rival. He is now, there are now calls for him to be investigated. There is reason to believe that he broke multiple laws, felonies. The GOP is nothing more than a bunch of criminals. It can't be overstated. So the result of all of this is what happens. Alvin Bragg receives a letter, a death threat with white powder in it. Now, the powder itself was found to be completely harmless. But basically, the letter said, I'm going to kill you. This is clear intimidation. Donald Trump on Truth Social posts a picture of Alvin Bragg and then a picture, side-by-side -side picture, with him in it holding a baseball bat. And he's talking about death and destruction. Are these the kinds of people that we really want to be electing to public office here? These are like, this is this is classic fascism. This is classic thuggery. And that's what fascists are. And that's what fascism is all about. It's about intimidation, thuggery, and oppression. And that is exactly what we have going on here. If people can't see this by now, I can't help you. You are being willfully ignorant because... All of this shit is being flaunted right in your face. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I lived through the whole Watergate thing. I followed it religiously. I have never, ever seen anything like this in my life. This makes Watergate look like, I don't know, it makes Watergate look like a kid stealing bubble gum from a corner store. That's what, that, that's what this makes Watergate look like. And Watergate was, you know, nothing to sneeze at back then. We have gotten so far afield from where we were that we now can't even hold people accountable anymore. I've seen lawyers on Twitter stating that we simply don't jail presidents. Well, Donald Trump isn't a president. He's a former president. He's just Joe whatever, Joe Everyman now. Is he rich? Yeah, he's rich. He's not above the law. And by the way, you know something? I think we ought to rethink that whole thing about jailing people. If the president of the United States breaks the law and it's subject to him being investigated and prosecuted and he goes to jail, that's why we have a vice president. It's no different than if he had died in office. We need to stop the nonsense here. The notion that we can't jail these people. We can jail these people. The whole Stormy Daniels thing was committed before he was president of the United States. It was something he did to ensure that he got elected president of the United States. He's defrauding the American people, much in the same way that George Santos defrauded his constituents. That is not okay. That is not politics as usual. The shit that you're looking at now going on in this country is not politics as usual. It is not. There is no way you can justify that for me. The GOP is nothing more than a legitimized pack of thugs. And the people, by the way, the Mitt Romneys, okay, all of the people in the House and the in the Senate, Susan Collins, not a word. Lisa Murkowski, not a word. Nobody condemning anything. Nobody. 
Rand Paul adding to the fire, by the way, he's a thug. All of these people, Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, that remain silent in the face of all this, they are complicit. They are complicit. It is as though they are circling the wagons along with them. So please spare me, okay? There are no more rational Republicans left in office. None. Nobody's condemning anything that Donald Trump is doing. I see none of that. I read the papers every day. No shortage of 16 newspapers a day. I've seen nobody speak out against what these guys are doing. I've seen nobody say to Jim Jordan, grow up. I see nobody saying to Kevin McCarthy, your conduct is not befitting the Speaker of the House. I see none of that from anybody in the Republican Party. There is no more caring about America here. They do not give a damn about America. What they give a damn about is authoritarian rule. Wake up, okay? Just wake up, everybody. If you are not committed, by the way, if you're a Republican and you are an old school Republican, you know, a John McCain Republican, a Barry Goldwater Republican, anybody but what we have in office right now Republican, if you are one of those and you are still voting Republican, you might as well be one of the current crop of Republicans. You might as well be a MAGA. Either stay home or vote Democrat if you love this country. And you can regroup and fix your party. But this party should not be the party in power at any time, at any time for the foreseeable future. Because they are taking this country right to hell every single day. And it is so clear and so blatant that you're missing it. If you're a Democrat and you think you're going to sit it out, you better think again. Because if you think they're not going to come for you, you know what? You better think again. You better think again. There is something wrong with this country right now, and it starts with the GOP. And we need to end that in 2024. This is thuggery. It's obstruction of justice. And Donald Trump knows exactly what he's doing by holding a rally in Waco. If you don't think that's a call to arms for his minions, you're sadly mistaken. I'll talk to you all later.